Hi friends, welcome to easyhouse.com YouTube channel, your one-stop solution for all your investment needs. Uh, today we'll be covering uh, debt funds, and uh, you know, and we'll also be covering uh, what is exactly the case which happened with Fra Franklin and why they shut down six of their debt mutual funds. So it's going to be a slightly longer video. Another thing I like to tell you before I start is please subscribe to our channel. If you like the video, please hit the like button and hit the notification bell. It motivates us to bet, do better, right? So, right. So now uh, let me start. Uh, in this uh, presentation, in this video, we'll be actually be covering what are debt funds, what uh, what are the different kind of debt funds, what are the impact, what are the important factors which impact debt funds like mainly yield duration and interest rates or who should be investing in these debt funds and what you should be looking at what what is the risk involved and lastly we'll move into why the franklin fiasco has happened and what is the cause for it and what should an investor do now and i'll also be giving you a tip as to if you are a debt investor and you like you want to invest in debt funds what you should be looking for to keep your money safe and get a good return as well so let's start with what are debt funds. So like equity funds, there's an equity stock market in India, there's a debt market as well, right? So mutual funds invest primarily in debt instruments. Now there are different kinds of debt, debt funds uh, based on what are they, in, in their, they are investing in. So you have uh, liquid funds, they basically invest in securities which have a maturity of 90 days there'll be guilt funds, there'll be money market funds, there'll be low duration funds. So low duration money market is more or less three to one year. And short term funds are mostly for that. And if you're looking for two to three years time, they're generally corporate bond funds, they are uh, credit risk funds, which have this uh, maturity or average mature duration of two to three years. When you look at longer terms, there are longer term funds as well, uh, you know, long term debt funds, which are for five years, 10 years, seven years, 10 years. There are other ones also called fixed maturity plans, which are very similar to FDs. Your money gets blocked in them, and uh, there is no, uh, no, uh, you know, like interest rate risk in them. So you know, uh, rather than you know telling you, we need to to you know, understand the different kind of debt funds. We actually need to understand what is the risk involved in them and what are the things which impact them, right? So let's start with yield. Yield is basically what is your return on your in on your in as in in your investment right so if you have a fd say it's with giving eight or nine percent or seven percent return so that yield on your investment is seven percent or six percent depending on what your fd is and there is primarily no interest rate risk because the your interest rate is fixed in case of fd agar hum duration dekhenge, we'll see duration then duration is what is the maturity of the paper which is the fund is investing in so there'll be average maturity in these uh, funds, you know. So liquid funds will have 90 days and less. Uh, when you'll go to other ones, some will have two years, three years, seven years, eight years, right? But what is the importance of duration, right? Duration is kind of a measure to interest rate movements in the market. So it's a sensitivity, right? So longer the duration is, longer will be the impact due to the interest rate, higher will be the impact due to interest rate movements. So motor motor, I can tell you like if the duration is three years, so a 1% movement upwards in interest rates will cause a 3% fall in, in the price of the fund. So the price of the bonds will go down by 3%. So if you have a five year or a six years, then it will be 5% and 7% and so on. This is the motor motor calculation it can be higher or lower, but more or less it comes to this. Now, now you know we need to also look at what is the risk which is involved in debt funds, you know, because what what happens is in debt funds people are investing in debt funds thinking that they're safe, because they're mistaking them for FDs. FDs you have to realize that there is no interest rate risk. There's a small credit risk which is if the bank defaults, right? So if it's say PMC, a cooperative bank defaulted on its on its payments, right? So that is a credit risk which is there in banks as well. Right, but there's no interest rate risk over here. So what is the difference? An interest rate risk, your interest 
you might get a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate but in a credit or risk you might not get your principal back or your investment back as well so you lose not only your interest but aapka principal amount bhi chal jayega right so rather than you worrying about return on capital your return of capital also will be jeopardized so when we look at now let's look at this in terms of you know which funds have what and what a person should look for so if you look at liquid funds liquid funds are investing into you know government securities into very high uh, rated uh, aaa rated corporate bonds so they more or less have no credit risk so there is there is a very very minimal chance of default in fact i'll say there is a lesser chance of default in liquid funds and banks also because they're not investing in one bank so you're not stuck in with one bank right so if a bank goes down it's not going to happen that all these investments will go down right because they're investing into number of instru- number of papers so liquid fund has interest rate risk but no credit risk ideally right so a person in this scenario also can invest invest in liquid funds now if you're looking at a higher tenure three to t- higher than three months say up to one year or two year then you can look at up to a year you can look at money market and short term funds if you're looking for two years you can look at low duration funds now there's a different kind of funds as well called credit risk funds they rather than looking at interest rates they actually try and get a higher return for investors based on taking higher credit risk right so they will not look at they'll actually take higher credit risk by that i mean they'll start investing into companies which have a you know a lower uh, a credit rating so they'll move away from a and government securities they'll go into you know double a probably a lean lower than that so they'll take a higher credit risk and generate you that extra return that's the those are credit risk and they're corporate bond funds which invest into papers which are uh, which are uh, held by companies right so they give you a higher return than what government will give you because you're taking on a higher risk there are these gown gills as well give gills are basically uh, debt funds which invest primarily in government securities they have no credit risk because there is no risk of non payment of inf- you know on or, or on principal or interest because uh, sorry non payment because of uh, there's no credit risk in them because government will always pay its money back and uh, there's only interest rate risk in these and the longer the tenure generally you know you if you're looking at investing and playing on the uh, investing in debt funds you should look at uh, guild funds at this point of time because there's no credit risk at all and the government will not default on its obligations on its debt obligations so your you can look at having a play in, in debt funds but l- uh, l- long term debt funds even but uh, you have to understand you know what they are investing into and they generally government securities which they should be investing into now you know there there is because of this need to have safer uh, safer debt instruments uh, pe- funds have come out with you know banking and psu funds as well which invest only in debt which is of psus and banks because they are considered much safer than corporates so there are these funds as well now you know when you are investing so let's look at what is the current interest rate scenario you know rates have come down uh, they've been cut drastically all over the world so us has seen you know almost near zero india has cut down uh, cut down its interest rates by almost a percent we are we are the lowest at, uh, as you know for the last 2 3 years and uh, do we see a further inter- rate, uh, rate cut over here there might be a half or 1% rate cut but i don't see you having a higher rate cut than that so should you be investing into long term debt funds i don't think so because if you're holding them for more than 3 to 4 years probably after this corona case gets over interest rates will move up and you will have a you know a negative return so long term debt funds you could hold them considering you know if you want to still get into debt uh but i don't think so you would there's much scope for interest rates to fall down in india as well for more than probably half a percent to 1% at best which is also unlikely now so now you know let's uh, look at uh, now since we understand this part we can you know you we can probably move on to see, analyze what what happened to franklin so franklin with franklin what has happened is 
they their six debt funds have actually been worn down what do you mean by that you mean that there will be no future redemptions there will be no future buying of these funds so i'll just tell you the name of these funds there's franklin india credit risk fund there's franklin india dynamic accrual fund franklin india income opportunities fund franklin india low duration fund short term income plan and ultra short bond fund so you know all these funds were good funds in their category they were like you know top 5 they've always been there in terms of returns and why have they been there right so franklin has always you know to, taken pride in the fact that they are very good in assessing credit risk and so they were taking higher credit risk than other people other fund houses in their debt instruments and their and the returns you know also reflect the same so the team was in fact franklin was taking a higher debt uh, credit risk than what they should have and they were generating higher returns as well so till you know franklin is a good fund house and their funds have done very well over the past 25 30 years and uh, but this strategy is actually good but they never took into account you know what is this curve they probably would have not taken a scenario where uh, you know what if the worst happens right so if there is a default or they do not they cannot sell the papers in the market so there are two things which have actually if you look at it franklin has not franklin companies have not de- have not defaulted the reason why they are having problems is because people are pulling out money from these funds so people could be pulling out money because corporates need money right now so they liquidating all the investments they can mm-hmm. you know retail investors might be looking at you know okay we also need money for household expenses hni also might be looking at you know okay let's move our market to equity because you know equities are probably undervalued and we'll get a higher return there so there are a lot of return redemption pressure on franklin funds and with that what has happened is they will looking to borrowing from you know banks uh they'll t- borrowing from the bank to pay redemptions and they've come to a point where they cannot do it anymore so the redemption pressure is so much that they have finally said that you know we are winding down these funds and investors will be given their money as and when the you know the the payments come in so if you have a 3 year uh you know like a a fund which has a 3 year duration average duration then you would money which should ideally come back in 3 years until unless no company defaults you know if there is default then probably there will be a hit on the nav or there will be a loss which you, you might see so this is what and if you have like a short term fund or a 6 months or a fund having 6 months duration then you probably should have money come in coming in in 6 months so another thing is with these with these funds because you st- and you're investing into you know they what they've done is they've invested into companies which have a rating of a double a and below right so they were actually looking at franklin india credit risk has a has a, around 50% of its portfolio which is invested into d- below you know in companies which have a credit rating below double a so there's a lot of credit risk involved over there and the, unfortunately you know indian markets are not so, debt markets are not so developed as the our equity markets are and there is actually a very uh, limited way to get rid of these low rated papers in india until unless you don't hold them to maturity so they you cannot even sell them in the market so that is another thing which is there in india unfortunately our debt markets are not very involved so if you are a high rated or government security you probably can get more liquidity and sell it in the market and fetch take some money but in this scenario where no one wants to take on credit risk because you don't know what are the future cash flows of the companies are they probably are not getting any buyers also also for it so there is a lot of redemption and this is what has happened now what should a investor do you know ideally do not invest ideally move your money out from all credit risk funds which are actually investing into companies which uh, which have a lower rating so because they are looking at you know and because we don't know what the future cash flows are going to be for these companies so i really do not invest into credit risk funds and if you have credit risk funds there is no harm in you know moving out your money out from there and putting it into funds which are probably investing into government securities so you have uh, you know uh, you know there's no there's no credit risk involved in that so this so this is what where you can invest because the return is getting generated by taking a higher risk and whatever in the world can go wrong you should assume you know you should take your options what is my best case scenario and what's my worst case scenario and if your worst case scenario is 
that all your money will go away and you're okay with it, then well and good. You can take the risk. But if you're not okay with that, then you should not be investing into, you know, funds which you do not understand or and you can you know i'll advise you to you know go and talk to your advisor understand take advice from friends who probably know about uh, invest investments and invest wisely and safely and uh, best of luck on your investments in debt funds and please like the video if you like our video and please subscribe we have